What is going on YouTube? We got a treat for you today. We are talking 2,000 horsepower of pure driftiness. That's right. I said it right. I said 2,000. One more time for the people in the back that didn't hear me. 2,000 horsepower. I still can't get over that number. I'm so excited. I'm a big high horsepower drifter. I love high horsepower. Almost all my drift cars have at least a thousand horsepower, at least 900 horsepower and above. I love, one more time, I love high horsepower. So this is just perfect for me. This is the Fast Furious Plymouth GTX. Wow, not only is it a great looking car, it doesn't have any mirrors and it, it has 2000 horsepower. I, I still can't wrap my head around it and I don't think Forza quite can wrap their head around it either. There's some weird stuff that goes on with this car. So today, this is a 2,000 horsepower drift build. Just, oh man. Fourth gear, all right. <laughs> just listen to this thing. It just screams, I'm powerful, yeah. Well, that was kind of creepy. Anyway, so. This is, like I said, this is the uh, Plymouth GTX Fast and Furious that just, that, bleh, bleh, bleh. this is the Plymouth GTX Fast and Furious Edition, 2,000 horsepower, pretty much fully built because, well, what else are you going to do? And here we are, fifth gear, sixth gear, 140, 150 miles an hour, still just spinning all kinds of tires, keep it up the wall. Keep it off the wall. All right, I don't know how we didn't smash a wall there, but we didn't, so I'm gonna take it and run. Not only does this thing look fantastic, but with this tune I got in here, it drives fantastic. Now, you do have to be extremely careful with the, uh, with, with the throttle here because as you just saw on that straightaway back there I was going 150 miles an hour in six gear smoking the tires and I still had lots of tire smoke to go I mean I'm just feathering the gas coming up this hill just feathering it but it's just oh this is such a great car so let me finish this lap here and then we'll go over the, uh, the tuning specs that I have put in here. I'll kind of explain to you why I put them in. Honestly, let me just full throttle fifth gear, sixth gear. Again, 150 miles an hour, spinning them tires. Let's see uh, what kind of points we can get on this corner. Nineteen thousand points, twenty thousand points. Wow, I'm just oh, this thing is mind-bending let's go hit these cones yeah nice little cone kill all right 27,000 points first set of corners all right let's talk about this tune here because i'm just gonna i i love driving this car i can't oh i can't express how much so here's my tire pressure i'm running standard 30 psi in the front i drop down the rears to 24 and a half my thought process on this was the fact that as these tires are gonna get hot uh, you know in the game it ups the tire pressure so I want to keep a little bit more bite into them so I lowered the tire pressure down to keep them from getting you know super super slippery as they get hot gearing it's what it left at when I upgraded it this is just where it's at um, I am running sport tires I have a feeling if I put race tires on this thing would be even quicker but there's just I don't really need to I'm very comfortable with the sport tires so the gearing is exactly how it was once I finished upgrading it so my alignment is pretty much the same on all my drift cars. I run two and a half degrees negative camber up front. I run now this one I I I usually put negative one and a half to two degrees in the rear as well. But 
Because this thing has so much power, I just left it at negative a half. I'm trying to keep as much power to the ground as I possibly can. My front toe out is half a degree. I mean, my thought process on this is, you know, I, I tow, the, tow the wheels out a little bit and it just gives me a little bit more angle. I, it's probably just in my head, but that's the way I feel about it. Uh, I do a negative a half toe in. So that way the car grips up a little bit more. It tracks a little bit straighter. That's how I do the rear. So now caster angle is seven degrees. Uh, I did lower the rear sway bars a little bit just to kind of not have it be super oversteery. I, I have a feeling that's not even a word, but I'm going to use it. So I, I softened them up a little bit as to give it a little bit less oversteer. Uh, I do believe I raised up the front st uh, stiffness a little bit too. Not by much, just a little bit, just enough to make a difference. My springs, I didn't do that much with the rear. I think I lowered it a couple pounds, but the fronts I upped a little bit from where it was at. Of course, I slammed the car because what else are you going to do? Now my dampening, I raised the rebound stiffness quite a bit in the front. I raised the bump stiffness up a little bit in the front. The rear I raised up too uh, for the rebound, but not near as much. Uh, I do want it to squat a little bit. I do want it to bite. I want to keep as much grip as I can in the back. I mean, we are dealing with 2,000 horsepower. So I also kept the rear bumpness, bump stiffness a little soft. Now, because I have the settings the way they are, I do have a little bit of an issue with if I fling the car left to right a little too fast, you know, I'm in transitions and I do kind of a snappy transition, it can overload that rear tire and it will spin out on me. I've noticed that a couple times. So before I transition, I usually kind of drag the e-brake a little bit to kind of mitigate that. Now I could increase the stiffness so it doesn't slop around as much too, but I'm used to driving it the way it's at. So my downforce, I just, this thing has so much power that putting maximum downforce on it isn't gonna bother this thing. So I just, as much grip as I possibly can, here we go. And my front brake bias, again, as I said with my track hawk video, I did a little bit more bias to the front. That way when I'm mid corner and I tap the brakes, it kind of tucks that front end in a little bit. It, allow, it slows the car, it slows the front end down and, and allows me to keep the back end out farther. I don't know necessarily how to explain it per se, but I think you'll understand me. And I didn't touch the uh, lock on the differential either so it's what it was at when I loaded up the tune again this thing has so much power that it doesn't care so that's my tune setup let me know in the comments below if you have any questions I'll try my best to explain why my things are the way they are uh, I will have this tune in fact I'm gonna share it right now this tune will be available for you guys to try and play with yourself Search my gamer tag for looking up tunes. It's Shadow XLX Hunter. Shadow and Hunter are all caps. Uh, XLX is lowercase. Just like my YouTube, just like my gamer tag, they are the same. So let me uh, put in the drift tune here. All right, guys. I'm back here with a voiceover. Um, first off, I want to apologize about the sound quality of my voice in the first bit of the video. I'm not sure why it wasn't that good but it should be better from now on. So what we're watching right now is something weird that happened to me while I was filming for the video. I was trying to jump into a public lobby to get some footage of me, you know, in, in the match, getting some actual points so you guys can see how this car stacks up. And when I loaded into the match, it put me into a drag track. And then when the actual race started, we loaded in and we were perpetually falling. And at one point we got up to 300 miles an hour. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. But if you guys liked the video so far, please give me a like and uh, drop a comment below uh, about what you guys think of 2,000 horsepower drifting. I mean, because I love it. I love my high horsepower drifting, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, anyways, I don't think I can express how much I love driving this car. It's super smooth. At the same time, it's a handful because of all the power. But it's super rewarding when you get, right, get it right and you dominate lobbies with it. I think this car has somewhat of an unfair advantage though. Uh, when it comes to the tracks with open sweepers, kind of like Dubai City Alt, Bernie's Alps, 
uh, the, this track, the Indianapolis GP, you're able to drift along sweepers like at the last corner of this track that, you know, the 600 horsepower guys, maybe even the 1000 horsepower guys aren't able to drift that well. This thing drifts like it's just no problem. So I think that's the reason why I actually came out on top of this lobby. I think that last, you know, five to 10,000 points I got here from this last corner were my saving grace. I'm not much of a points drifter. I mainly drift for fun. So I don't really hold that crazy of a line or I don't really hold crazy angle, but I'm naturally a fast drifter. So combined with 2000 horsepower, this car just allows me to get away from everybody and just take off and run my own little bubble. My theory on why I win lobbies as much as I do is not because I am a, a great points drifter. Uh, I don't, like I said, I don't hold crazy angles or I don't hold crazy line, but I'm able to cover more ground. So while you know the top points drifter guys might get five to ten to fifteen thousand points a, a more than me a lap, I cover more ground. You know, I may I run you know three maybe four more lap. Okay, not quite, but I run more laps. I cover more ground in the same amount of time that they do. So I have more point earning opportunity if that makes sense so i think that's the reason why i win lobby so much for not because i'm the best points drifter but because i cover so much ground this tune is available if you guys want to try it for yourself i highly recommend it i think everybody that has access to the fast and furious car pack needs to try this car for themselves it's just a wild ride <laughs> It's a crazy experience. There's nothing else like it. You saw as, as I go down the back straight here when I'm just able to give it all the beans. And it, it, it's weird. The, the screen kind of warps in a certain way that it's just like the game can't process the amount of acceleration that this thing has. You know, my final thoughts on the car is that it's an absolutely amazing car. It's super, super rewarding once you get it right. And you, but the main thing is that you have to have throttle control. If you don't have fantastic throttle control, you're going to be spinning in circles. This thing will eat you and chew you up and spit you out if you don't have great throttle control. So if you guys liked the video, be sure to give me a like. Um, give me a subscribe if you want to see more insane drift builds from me. And leave me a comment down below about what you guys think of uh, 2000 horsepower drifting. Thank you guys for watching. I will see y'all in the next one.